Hi, welcome. I'm Cindy Zulsdorf with the NAB Show Exhibitors Webinar on Kokoro Marketing. And today we are looking at booth traffic, getting more of it and making the most of it. And so welcome everybody. I'm so glad you're here. And no matter where you're located, we're glad you're here. No matter the size of your company, small, large, uh, if you're looking to have a great trade show and get more out of it, uh, this is the place for you to be. And so today, I'm so happy to be here with Jesse Foster from Cobalt Digital. Hi, Jesse. How are you doing? Hi, Cindy. Hey, everybody. Good to be here. Awesome. So uh, Jesse's the Director of Product and Business Development at Cobalt Digital. And Jesse, you've been to a few NABs and have some industry experience, I know. So I'm super glad you're here. Great. Yeah, I'm happy to share what I, what I can. Nice. All right. Well, let's get right into it. Uh, let's talk about getting people into the booth at the show. You know, the, the NAB show is so big, and I think a lot of our audience are looking for a way to get the attention of people who are walking by at the show. And uh, you have a lot of experience, uh, both at Cobalt Digital and other companies. Um, what have you seen that really works? And uh, yeah, how do, how do you get them into the booth? Sure, sure. So um, I think I, I want to analogize it to um, the advent of Art Deco design in Los Angeles on the uh, Miracle Mile uh, with the automobile popularity of the automobile. People are flying by storefronts at 35 miles an hour, maybe a little slower. And uh, the signage in Art Deco and that whole uh, style of design was meant to allow people to see your message on the fly when they're driving by. And uh, really to scale uh, when you're walking a trade show aisle, uh, per booth, those are almost like buildings and you're flying by. So the messaging really needs to stand out, grab their eye and speak to them all, all at the same time because you really only have that, that glance that they're gonna give you unless they're specifically looking for you already. So with that said, um, I like to focus on um, terms that are you know, pertinent to the time frame. Uh, if it's something the FCC in my site and broadcast, if they're pushing for a particular requirement, um, you would definitely want to highlight the fact that you have that and you can really pull something like that off with just a few key words, you know, like loudness processing, right? And that would stop somebody in their tracks and pull them into your booth just based on that recognition of that phrase. Um, uh, other things that I, I noticed, I was at CES last week and I've seen the trend in, in our side of the business as well is uh, spotlighting. Um, uh, I, uh, international trade shows, a lot of them do ambient lighting where it's uh the booths are the only lighting uh, i see that trend kind of coming where there's a more sedate lighting uh for booths but then that allows you to spotlight your highlighted words and they really stand out really looks clean and it's a real uh, lower cost way to uh, have your message pop from the aisle and grab people's eye that's what i just been seeing that trend happening quite a bit got you so you're talking about keywords and also spotlighting as being two uh really important points in terms of getting that yeah. aisle traffic on into yeah. the booth. Uncluttered uh, so they can see the key message, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's perfect. And, and so in addition to grabbing the attention of those folks on site, um, once they're um, in the booth, you know, what do you kind of kind of do with them in terms of talking with them? So they're, they're in the booth, how do you talk to them and make sure it's a good conversation and useful for everybody? Sure. So, you know, I mean, uh, our industry are really selling solutions. Uh, so uh, if you could get from the customer what they do and how um, what their pain point is, you know, what their problem is and how your product can solve their, their problem, then, you know, you have a win right there. You might even get a PO on the floor. You know, that's just ideal. <laughs> you have all your tools there. You have all your demo there. All your uh, support team is there. So uh, really to dig into how you can help somebody um as fast as possible by asking them what they do and what kind of problems they're trying to solve so you can really kind of cut to the chase while you have them there for that short amount of time hey so you know when you and i were chatting last week and kind of getting ready to to do our session today with everybody i loved what you said about the whole improv thing and how uh, just talk about that piece i love that sure yeah so the concept of improv comedy would be to you know further the the joke and not stop it in his tracks by um, making any kind of uh, uh, statements to the contrary, right? So you say, yes, and, yes, and. So you kind of agree with the premise and pull it along uh, and don't stop it in his tracks, right? So that 
the effect of that of the trade show floor is just that uncomfortable silence and then they turn around and just kind of leave if, if, you, <laughs> if, you, if you stop it and then it's like okay you know and then everybody parts ways you know so um definitely kind of keep it going you know how to win friends and influence people let them talk you know kind of pull it out of them let them tell you about themselves you know kind of throw a little bit of that in there too I'm glad you mentioned that, how to win friends and influence people. Um, you guys on the, the call here, who's read that book or listened to the audio? I know there's an updated audio version of it, actually. Um, I de- I'm just curious. Uh, chat on in if you've heard of it, read it. What do you think? Um, it's good because it's nice to share uh, great resources like that. How to win friends and influence people is awesome. So good, good call on that one. Um, yeah. All right. We got people who've read it. Oh, somebody did the course. Yeah, did the course. Chris did the course. Yeah. <laughs> I listened to it on Audible. <laughs> Question for you, Jesse. Uh, you had said that you have some set questions that you use. Um, share with us what those are that you like. These are my go-to. Like, I don't know what to say, or I, I just feel confident when I ask these questions. Tell me about that. Yeah, it's kind of a call back to the interaction I was just referring to where you, um, you want to validate, qualify any kind of interaction you're going to have with them right off the bat. Right. So really asking who they work with, what they do uh, is really over the years I've kind of uh, moved. That's my go-to right there. Cause I, like, like I said earlier, it it kind of lets them talk about themselves right away. You know, most of these people are proud of what they do and uh, they'll tell you that they got a cool project and they need your help, you know? So that's, what I've kind of uh, learned is trying to just uh, ask them about themselves and what they do. Right. Really. Cause if you don't make stuff that they use, you can all just kind of you know, <laughs> move on. Right. So kind of vet it out right away with those questions. So are there any no, no's any, like, be sure you don't ask this, like you want to avoid this type of question kind of deal. What do you think about that? Yeah. Uh, so any, any kind of uh, questions that could be answered with a no, you know, or, any kind of curt answer that stops a conversation in his tracks, even makes it uncomfortable, you know, because um, sometimes uh, customers aren't even the most, you know, personable uh, people as well. Right. So uh, you should make it easy for them, right. Uh, to, to be nice and open up, but uh, definitely uh, you want to not give them a, an easy way to get out of there with a no and, <laughs> and just shuffle on, you know, totally, totally. And then what is your sort of thought, about booking appointments like is it cool to just show up at an ab show and be like i'm gonna get some booth traffic or is booking appointments a big deal what's your kind of philosophy on that jesse yeah i think to ensure your investment is you know comes back to you um as best as possible you need to book appointments you need to make the best uh time use the time as possible you know it's extremely expensive real estate time to get your company out there and everything um not booking appointments in advance is almost negligent, really. Um, you, you need to have a calendar set up with some meetings um, at minimum. And all that could fall apart. You know, customers try their best to keep the calendar on their side. You know, it's a two-way street. Um, so yeah, meetings, anchor meetings, key meetings, but don't overdo it to the point where you can't be flexible, I would say, because uh, throughout the day, people will be late. People, uh, key people will show up that you weren't expecting. So having some flexibility in your schedule with the ability for uh, some key individuals to go from meeting to meeting helps a lot as well when you get overbooked. Yeah. Yeah. That, that totally makes sense. I mean, I I like to go to a show um, thinking like, if I see these 20 people, I'm stoked. And of course, everybody after that is just gravy. Or if I see these hundred people or whatever the number is and really have that list of people, um, And even share it with some of the booth staff. Like if you see someone from this company in here, (laughs) be active about it, right? And so not only calling up front um, and getting those appointments, just alerting the booth staff as to who those kind of key folks are that you want to connect with. Yeah. Yeah. How many people on the call, by the way, just chat in. I'm super curious. Do people on the call go ahead and make appointments at, uh, trade shows like NAB show, or do you just kind of wing it? No judgment. Just, you know, everybody's got their own thoughts on that. So I'm super curious about that. So I'm seeing here, we've got folks who do make appointments for the sales team and it's pretty important, pretty important. Um, and other folks who say they're making, um, heavy appointments ahead of time, it's required. 
So that's good to know. So we've got a couple people weighing in saying, yes, absolutely making appointments. Jesse, for, for you and for your company, who, who does that responsibility go to in terms of uh, deciding who that hit list is, if you will, and uh, making those appointments? How does that work for you? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, in all the companies I've been with, it's always on the sales manager's uh, plate to uh, propose a list of, of uh, key contacts that they want to have at the show, whether it's a special event or just for meetings. Uh, they would submit that to management. So management has a full oversight of you know what the, uh, what the goals are in regards to who's coming in, what we should be focusing on. Um, so but it always does uh, fall to the individual salesperson's um, uh, they need to set up the calendar, maintain their portion of the calendar. And we have a shared, you know, uh, resource calendar that everybody maintains, uh, as one point of reference. And do you use any kind of like appointment reminder software or some like automated thing that like pings the person, Hey, you have an appointment with Jesse in 30 minutes or any stuff like that, or not so much or not yet. No, any of that kind of stuff, which is for internal use, just to remind ourselves and whatnot, but we haven't embraced any of these new tools, uh, marketing tools to preemptively uh, reach out and let people know. And no, those are powerful though. I'm noticing. Yeah. <laughs> I like them. I use, uh, I use a couple of them and I use them with my clients and actually put them into place for some of them. Some people don't like them. They're like, nope, we just, we have our Google calendar and the salespeople are d taking care of it. And then some people, um, we do like automated email reminder. And then some people I work with, I actually set up like automated text, uh, you know, SMS reminders. And it just is, is really to everybody's personal taste, I think at this point. Yeah, I think they're helpful though. Just working with you, I've seen them and they, you know, they, a 15 minute reminder from Outlook is too long because within 15 minutes I could forget. What <laughs> so I appreciate that last minute email. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I like it. Hey, you and I talked a lot about um, demo stations, which is one of my favorite topics. Um, can you jump into that topic? Because uh, demo stations deciding, you know, there's kind of a couple schools of thought on uh, should I have everything in my demo station or should it be sort of uh, problem solution specific, all that. Uh, talk to us about that. Sure, sure. So um, I'm in that boat right now figuring out what I'm going to do. We have so many different stories to tell and so many uh, different one side doesn't fit all with what we do, right? It's a system made of multiple pieces or it's one thing, right? So um, the demos range from a, you know, a mousetrap type, of, you know, push this button, watch all this stuff happen, see the result, uh, which is a classic, you know, real demo um, or a virtual presentation. And I'm more of a fan of the virtual presentation side of it, just based on the amount of, of content you could bring, you know, when you have somebody standing there and you have say, what I use is um, PowerPoint, you know, in a kiosk mode, and you could browse multiple virtual demos from a top level menu and see what they're interested in, as opposed to saying, well, this is what we brought. This is what we hope that you're interested in, in to watch right now. And I hope that I could pull it off as a sales guy in Vegas, you know, uh, Monday, you know Monday morning, hopefully it works. <laughs> you know, like I, th I feel those are disastrous and you're missing an opportunity to really go show them a menu of, of, graphics that you know represent different workflows or whatever and really go in and dig it little animation showing the signal traverse the process and then boom they get it light goes off and and you've made it further with that virtual engagement and I, I think you would in a lot of cases with an actual old-fashioned you know physical demo so uh, but it really does depend on what you're trying to to do and tell but um that's uh, a key there is uh, the virtual side I'm pushing to and then having a, a specialist, uh, somebody who's very knowledgeable to, to be there and take it to that next level. Like, so if you really do get a nibble and this, this end user, this, this person's a professional they're, they're over your head, right? And they go, oh yeah, I need that. Tell me about it. You know, <laughs> it's, it's just really key to capitalize on that demo with a specialist. So I always like to try to have a specialist at each location to you know, put a, a fine point on the discussion. So when somebody walks away, they feel uh, educated. Not like that you're just talking to, you know, the salesperson or a rep that um, is looking over their shoulder for somebody, you know, <laughs> that, that really knows the answers. You know, it's, it's good to have somebody local to each area is what I've learned. Gotcha. So I, what I'm hearing from you is that you've got um, uh, 
a kind of problem solution diagram, a way to get in and show different uh, uh, kind of solutions to people um, and then kind of having that pro environment so they feel right at home and then having your genius guru on hand to like hit all the super deep questions as needed. Exactly. Basically close it right on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. And how much kind of coordinating do you need to do with that um, genius guru person in advance or do you just wing it or how, how do you do that piece? Hmm. Yeah, well, it definitely uh, to have them involved with it. And I've always been fortunate in my career to actually have access to the engineers and or high level product managers who worked on the product, you know, so that that's pretty straightforward. Nobody's more knowledgeable than they are. Right. So you don't really need to. Uh, tell them anything really the salespeople are there kind of then to take notes capture any um, any uh, sales opportunities that are that are coming up and also learn you know as a uh, byproduct of hearing the specialist give their spiel at the at the level that they can so jesse talk to us about um, how you decide who can go to the show like can everybody just go to the show oh, or right, do yeah. you just uh, do you do any booth training with people sure. do you have any yeah, rules yeah. about what people can and can't do in the booth or is it just like hey everybody just go right. for it what do you so what's your take I think I come from a more militaristic background on, on that, uh, just how expensive the show is and how much work goes into it. But uh, yeah, I mean, everybody that's going needs to be uh, required, basically. Um, training, uh, we tried to do a uh, sales training for uh, the, the staff that's, cause they're all regional, you know, so they come in, you do sales training. And then before the show actually starts every day, we try to convene an hour and a half or so before the show starts and go through each station. Uh, so progressively through the week, uh, the salespeople get more and more uh, knowledgeable uh, through that process. But um, that and then another rule of thumb, you know, as far as at the show is, is uh, cleanliness. Everybody be as, as, you know, as presentable as possible. No eating in the booth. No, no coffee in the booth. Um, just, you know, treating the booth with respect that it, that it deserves with the, the amount of money and, and effort that went in to put it together. So everybody that comes out is of the same mind you know it's 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 that core team every year so it's really the key personnel come out um engineers that need to have deeper conversations with partners and or look at other technologies those are the kind of things that dictate who comes out it's interesting that you say no food or no coffee in the booth because i know that there's people who have varying opinions about that and so you'll see like a water bottle stashed behind something or a coffee and um, breath mints sitting on the counter or not, or I don't know, just. Uh, I don't know. Like I was like analogize it to like the Apple store, right? Like, you know, it's like whatever that's worth, you know, it's a pretty sterile environment, whatever you know, you're in there and it's designed to be as it is, right? Like if somebody put their cup behind you know, the iMac that you're looking at, if an employee did that it would totally bump you. Right. You know I mean? So that's the way I look at the booth. Yeah. It should be, it should be the, as nice as it could be for the four days that you're there, uh, treated it with the respect that it deserves, you know, and uh, I think the customers appreciate that. Now, what do you do if you're, if you're uh, on a demo and it just starts going sideways? I, I have to say that, you know, a lot of demos I've done have gone great. And I've also been in some where things just eh, aren't going how I was hoping. Like, what do you do with that? Yeah, I usually start, you know, tap dancing, making jokes. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's, that's what I do. And then uh, there's a little self-deprecating humor. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically depending on what the failure was, you know, I mean, if it was a pilot error, I would you know, explain that away. Say it was my fault. Get somebody to take over that knows how they're doing it and just, you know, eat it, you know, <laughs> not a problem. Um, or, you know, say, have a conversation with the customer, say, you know, this is not quite ready. That's why they're running around. There's, you know, just honesty. I don't know. I'm very transparent. Um, so I would not hesitate to tell him what went wrong. <laughs> I, you know, I <laughs> that's think I that's it. a, it's a great thing about you is you've got that genuine, uh, um, personality and you're just super open about it. And, you know, when we started talking about working in the booth and who has a successful, uh, demo and booth experience, that's why I thought of you. And that, I think that genuine piece comes out. It's like, we don't have to hide and, and become automatons and not tell them what's going on. Just that genuine interaction is huge, of course. Right. I mean, you should have that guy there too, that, that you know, some people don't appreciate <laughs> the personality, right? So you always uh, 
have a, uh, a range of, of personality types in your booth is good as well too. So you can match up, you know, cause some, some engineers are just totally dry. They don't want any jokes. They just want pure, you know, so have your VP of engineering for that guy. If you can, you know, match them up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned that Jesse, because, um, I, I think it's really valuable to think about that booth personnel in terms of having different personalities. And you can look at it in a lot of different ways. You can look at like, who's your favorite band? You can see that the people in the band all have different personalities. Who, who's your favorite, uh, what's your favorite TV show? If you look at the, the top uh, four or six characters on that show, you can see they're all different personality types. Mm -hmm. Or you can go into the like, um, DISC disc personality that we use like sometimes in sales and marketing stuff when we're doing that type of profiling um, in terms of our personas. It's the same thing with working in a booth. That's exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, it's like a baseball team analogy too, right? Like a, baseball team sports, yeah. You know, the pitcher, catcher, everybody's got their part to play and their mm -hmm. other strength. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's good stuff. And then do you have anything... Um, you know, uh, somebody just messaged in and said, uh, well, what about texting in the booth? Like, that doesn't seem like a good thing in that whole clustering. And that, what other no-nos can we just sort of, if you had a little quick list of other things that we'd want to avoid, what might Sure. Those? Yeah, I mean, um, I would say uh, you know, employees shouldn't uh, congregate and have a click, you know, that looks, uh, it's intimidating to break up the conversation <laughs> as a customer. You know, that's like a non-starter right there, I would say. Um, but uh, yeah, so that, that's a key one there. <laughs> <laughs> now, how do you decide if it's a good show? Like you, you come back from an AB show or maybe still at the show. Like how do you determine it? Is it something you set up in advance or uh, talk to us about that? Uh, yeah, I'd say the, uh, the wrap up dinner. That's part of our tradition is um, where we capture the overall uh, take on the show by having each salesperson give a story of a, potential opportunity, um, exciting, you know, story cross pollinate between, and then, uh, throughout that process management, seeing, you know, the overall picture, seeing, um, which regions had the most activity and what where the most excitement is coming from, what products need the most attention and so forth. So that's, that's the, the, the quickest, you know, almost real time way to, to get a feel, um, before everybody heads home, you know, is that wrap up dinner, I would say. Yeah, yeah. And do you have like a, a story that, you know, where you went, oh, that, that we know was successful because of X or not to put you on the spot, but just trying to think like, how would you really go? Oh, that was awesome. Like, do you have something like that you could share? Uh, well, I mean, um, yeah, there's plenty, you know, I mean, really, it's a, if you're like in a conversation, you got the key decision makers from a station group and you hit on something uh, that solves their problem and they all start looking at each other and nodding at each other in silence and, you know, they get excited, you know, like those kind of situations now where you're like, oh man, we got this. This is awesome. You know, and those happen throughout the week, you know, honestly. So, um, you know, that those, those moments where, you know, you, you just, you got it and it's has large implications like across the station group or something like that. Those are the best. Ah, I love those. Those are, those are definitely the best where you have someone come in and they go, Oh, you know, I'm looking to solve this problem. And you really, can I share this little info with you? And they go, Oh, that's really cool. Can I tell you one more thing? And they go, Oh my gosh, I have to have yeah. that. You know? Yeah, exactly. I, need 400 I love of them. that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Nice, nice. Okay, so for the people who are really digging into getting more traffic and making the most of uh, what they have going, do you have maybe one thing you can share with us? It's like a surefire, like this always works. I love to use this at every show. Like, do you have that secret weapon that you or would be willing to share with our uh, audience today? Sure, sure. So um, when I think about that question, it makes me think of um, a lesson I've learned from, from my boss, uh, Bob McAlpine. It's a tried and true method of, of throwing a cocktail reception at the beginning of the show. Um, and with the intent of bringing in key resellers, dealers, partners, right up front at the beginning of the show in a disarming atmosphere over beers and, and wine where everybody can kind of meet and network in your booth under your uh banner and then all week they 
have you in mind. You've already broken the ice with them just in case they're like, oh, yeah, my Cobalt guy, I don't remember exactly who, you know, that kind of thing, right? So right up at the, at the beginning of the week, and then people will, those dealers, those reps will bring their customers through throughout the week as a residual effect from you throwing that, that party the first day, the first or second day. So that, that's always done really well for us. And it also makes you look very popular when there's people spilling out of your booth <laughs> into the hallways, you know, because, uh, and it's by invite only, you know, so it's pretty exclusive uh, type of event too, but uh, that always uh, goes very well. I love that, Jesse. That's great. Has anybody tried that doing the cocktail party or some kind of party early in the show? Um, I just am interested in that. Uh, that's a great one. Um, I actually worked with a, um, a client at IBC and we did that. We had a couple consecutive nights of a party and you're right because it's true. People came back the next night and they would bring uh, prospects or other cl clients and stuff like that with, and that was, act that was really good. Yeah. Right. And so we've got some other folks here saying, yeah, they, they do a kickoff the day before the show with dealers and customers. That's awesome. All right, I'm gonna summarize a little bit about what we looked at today, and then we're gonna stay on, Jesse and I are gonna stay on for a Q&A with everybody. So some of the things that you hit on today, Jesse, that I thought uh, were just brilliant, we're um, gotta get the graphics and line of sight and keywords that people care about. Uh, is so important. And then uh, looking at uh, your hit list and really making those meetings for sure, no matter what, got to have the meetings. And then your demo stations, uh, choosing which path you're going to take in terms of I'm going to do everything or I'm going to hit these solution-based things, being sure you've got that genius on hand and that the there's a way to uh, hit the solutions that people need there. And then of course, your uh, um, million dollar <laughs> idea there is having that cocktail party early in the show and getting together with people then. So that's great. Thank you so much, Jesse. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. So we do have some questions. Uh, someone chatted in and uh, wondered if you uh, ever have tried using the guest passes uh, and to use those to promote the show uh, up front. Uh, definitely. Um, standardly, uh, in the past, I would actually proactively go out, tell people early on when, you know, not everybody has them, they're not a commodity, um, and use that as just an icebreaker to call people and give them that pass. Uh, but also I make it part of um, my signature. And then everybody in the company uh, standardizes their email signature uh, just to get that free pass, the color VIP pass. Yeah. Got it. it. Cool. So you put it right in your signature on your email. You know, with a link to the registration page. And then do you have a standard signature for everybody in the whole company? So everybody's doing that or do people are kind of unique and how do you do that? So this past couple of years we've homogenized it. Yeah, I do the graphic based off of the NAB um, uh, vector file that they give out, you know, uh, and then everybody standardizes on it. I think it helps. Nice. 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 Work. All right, we have a question here that says, which NAB show app um, or the features um, do you recommend to use that will help that make the exhibition most successful? And so I think um, they might be talking about the NAB show portal. Feel free to chat back in with a little bit more uh, clarification on that. Do you use the NAB show portal, the My NAB show? I do. Yeah. I got to do it more uh, every year. I do it more and more, but yeah, I mean, it's like a little micro site, you know, that you can have for yourself from what I recall uh, in regards to product images and, and information. And then you could also make it easy for people to add you to their experience app, right? The my NAB show app, I believe like automatically throw you onto their, their schedule, you know, there's, so there's a lot of value add to that app. Um, I, I haven't looked at it this year. Yet. I haven't gotten back into it. So I don't really have any, <laughs> fresh statements on it, but it is powerful. A lot of, a lot of tools in there for marketing. Yeah. Um, something I've had a really good experience with actually with the, my NAB show portal is um, in addition to putting in info about the company, kind of change the language in a, a little bit. So it's more customer facing, if you will. So it's, you know, if you're looking for this, we have this and click here to download this ebook right now so that it's not just sort of shooting them back to the website, but actually giving them some more value and, and hitting them yeah. up with some extra That's info good. right there. Mm -hmm. So I like to do that as well. Okay. 
Oh, I'd like to know Jesse's experience. How many years has he exhibited at NAB? You can answer that if you want to. <laughs> yeah, I think I've done uh, 16 NABs now. So, nice, nice. Stacking up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and we did, um, Nick uh, from NAB Show just chatted in and said that he's available to take any questions um, as well. So Fallon, if you wouldn't mind putting his uh, email address into the chat box here, everybody just keep an eye out for that and we'll post that here in just a moment. What other questions uh, do people have? And what topics would you guys like to see in the shows coming up? We uh, are talking about tracking trade show ROI uh, next week, the following week, um, GDRP, which is regulations around data, and, and that includes uh, getting people's names at trade shows, the booth. And then we have uh, some slots coming up, just a couple more this year that are already scheduled and really want to serve uh, the exhibitors here and make sure uh, that we have uh, covered the topics that you want. So please chat that in or hit us up afterward as well. All right, just look, scrubbing through the chat here to see what other questions we have, Jesse. And if you have anything uh, that came up as we're, as we're talking to. I'm thinking a show uh, topic that might be helpful is just like dealing with the, the union, you know, how to, how to navigate, you know, the actual physicalities of, of the show, you know, like um, logistics and stuff, yeah, logistics, like, cause it can be pretty intimidating and there's a learning curve, you know, like people might assume mm -hmm. you're born with the knowledge or something, but it's I know, you know, right? it's acquired <laughs> over years, you know, and then they have changed it up on you and stuff. But uh, yeah, maybe like rules and regulations uh, mm -hmm. you know, in, in regards to uh, might get too technical, but you know, just a uh, rigging and they just don't have changes on rigging. Stuff yeah, and one of the um, one of the clients I get to work with um, from Canada actually, they uh, had a challenge shipping their crates in a couple times into Vegas, and just you know I helped them navigate that because mm -hmm. you know you can get you get your stuff stuck and and not yeah, have a show. So. Yeah, those dry forklift right through. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it was it, we couldn't get it out of customs or something like that. So we ended up working together to try to 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 do that so logistics is a fair point what other uh, questions or topics would you guys like to see feel free to chat that in well it sounds like with all that uh info that you you d shared with us you're gonna have an awesome show as always mm -hmm. and uh if, yeah. if you guys have questions uh for jesse he generously said you can email him so his email is in the chat box here well, thank you, Jesse. Great thank to see you, you again. Me and too. Have a beautiful Looking forward day. to NAB. <laughs> thanks, All right. Everybody. See you in Vegas. Thanks, thanks for joining. Bye. Bye bye.